system. This man has held six different belts. The only team to win all three major belts, the Crockett Cup. This man's a legend in How am I not going to like this guy, right? He knows everything. Now, I want to ask you one question. Welcome to another edition of Hero Television. I'm your host, P.L. Myers, along with John G. And this month, we have Dr. John Jevitz of Elmhurst, a man that I've known since probably 1988 uh, at York High School. And uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming on the thank show. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank, thank you, you sir. Appreciate it. And for the viewers out there, how did you get your start into getting into physical therapy? So I started out working as an athletic trainer at York High School and in chiropractic school. So Jack Tosh, the athletic director, hired me. And I can remember my first day at York High School, I saw like 110 kids. <laughs> and it was my first day, and I said, Mr. Tosh, I can't do this. And I idolized Mr. Tosh and Mr. Newton. Yeah. So all he said to me, which was great advice, is he said, John, whatever you do in life, do the best you can, and don't worry about it. Just uh -huh. give 100% and do the right thing uh -huh. at all times, and everything will work out. So I quit. <laughs> and uh, he said, you're not leaving. You're going to stay, you're going to do the best you can, do the right thing, he says, and you won't believe how the students, the parents, the coaches, and the teachers will change your life. And when you were growing up, did you know you wanted to get in to do this? I wasn't sure. Uh, I know that I wanted to help people. Like my mom and dad always gave back, and I saw that great, uh, they were great role models at home. And so I wanted to emulate what they did and try and give back in some way or another. So, and I like sports, so this is a great way. So when you were growing up, who were your heroes? Who did you look up to? My number one hero of all time, Jesus Christ. Can't beat him. It's hard to beat that one. Yes, can't beat him. So that's my number one. And uh, I don't think you can ever emulate that one. But well, the cool thing for me is and I'm going to challenge, actually, all your viewers. You've got, let's say, 5 million viewers right now. I'm going to challenge everybody tomorrow to be a hero. So my buddy, Dr. Mike Kelcagno, his kids, he'll call me in the morning and say, tell Dr. Jevitz how your day's going to be, what you can say before you start every day. And his five kids will yell out, I will be great today. I will do the right thing. I will be a leader. Now, if tomorrow we challenge every viewer to do the right thing, do something nice for somebody without asking for something in return. Open a door. Give a compliment. That means we could have five million uh, heroes and miracles tomorrow because of you guys, excuse me, and doing your show. And that's what I'm going to challenge everybody tomorrow. Five million heroes tomorrow. And you, know, you look around. Our police, our fire, uh, our military, all heroes. But there's so many people that aren't thanked for the jobs, whether it's Ray Graham Association, with the special needs, Little City, all these people that are helping out, doing something nice. I feel that our country is the greatest in the world, and we have more heroes than anywhere in the world. We just don't always, they don't always get basically the accomplishment awards like they should. Oh, I totally agree with that. I can't argue. Um, what would you consider is the best part of your job, and what is the worst part of your job? Best part of the job is my goal would be to change as many lives with chiropractic and physical therapy as possible. And if you can do that, so how many people, the true successes don't work. So I've never worked a day in my life. When I get to see guys like this, oh and, dear God, <laughs> <laughs> and to see patients, but you come in and the cool thing is every patient has a story, everybody. And they're amazing. And people are amazing and people are good. And so when you can come in and see somebody that's struggling and hurting, and tell them, and being consistent over time is success. But if you tell them, if you're consistent over time, we can potentially change your life. And then when we do that, whose life will you change? So it's, it's a pretty cool opportunity. I live three blocks from here. I walk to work. I have the greatest wife in the world, the greatest family in the world. I mean, how can you be more blessed than that? With all those blessings that you have, when you went to uh, all your training and going to school for that, what was the biggest change that you saw? Because, you know, when you go into the field, you think one thing, but then when you have to start practicing in anything, what's the biggest change that you've seen in the field? There, it is so much different to go, for example, York High School's training room. Yeah. I went at York for 25 years, and I see in Willowbrook. So the first day, I'm like, well, here comes Paul Myers. <laughs> So, all right, I'm going to help Paul. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you see another kid, another kid, another kid. Before you know it, there's 40 kids waiting in line, and they've all got to be in practice. 
If you're late for Coach Newton's practice, you're kicked off the team. So they might have to all be out of there in 9 to 13 minutes. So nobody's trained in that. The real world's completely different. And everybody, as I said, you need to treat completely different because everybody has their own story. And with the technology, how much has technology changed since you started till now? It's amazing. Uh, the advances with, when I started, nobody did MRIs. Mm -hmm. So in Elmhurst, yeah. Jack Tosh, the athletic director, was the first athletic director to have an athletic training working at school, athletic wow. trainer. And then from that, other schools added. And back, back then, they even called them tapers. Wow. And that was it. So there was really no acknowledgement of a trainer. They were like the lowest level. And now, athletic trainers are huge. And the wow. respect is huge. And so, but to say as a trainer, you could help 100 kids in a day, huh. oh my goodness, uh, that's, that's fantastic. Huh. You know, we're coming up on the, the summer season, and, you know, people go to fests and community events and all that, and there's always a chiropractic booth there. And I certainly mean no disrespect. Every time you go in there, they're going to find something wrong. So is that just, like, is everyone in the world need some sort of chiropractic, or, or like, what... You know, I always wonder about those those booths. I mean, obviously they should come and see. That's a great question. So, uh, is announcers? Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably some good announcers and some bad announcers. It's the exact same thing with chiropractic. So I would tell you when I would be out working on someone because at our community service we would go to a York High School mm -hmm. and give all the teachers free chair massages for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's our give back. Now, of all those teachers, will everybody have a problem? No. Uh, there's a lot of them come in and say, I feel great. Fantastic. Now, if they do have a problem and they're serious about getting it better, that's somebody that you might want to be able to reach out and actually change their life. But not everybody does have a problem. So that's the positive. Now, we're, we're in your office, and we see a lot of, uh, a lot of 8 by 10s of mm -hmm. famous people. You know, you, you, obviously you didn't get into this because of the famous people. But how does it feel to, to be working on some people that, you know, people look up to and stars and all that? So I'm very blessed to work a lot of major events with, with celebrities and well-known people. This is the coolest part. They're just like you and me, and maybe some of the kindest, nicest people you've ever met. So the celebrities are, like I said, they're fantastic, but everybody's the same. And you know what? You're a celebrity. You're a celebrity. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyone that comes in our office is basically a celebrity, and that's why you want to treat them, because everybody is the same. Goal is just to help them. Now, I know you're a positive guy, and I know you're always thinking forward, but you had to be starstruck by one of the people, because, I mean, growing up, I mean, yes, we know who your hero is, but there's other athletes that you probably watch on TV, and you kind of like, who was the one person that you were working on that you kind of were taken aback for just two seconds? So... I can't tell you anymore with HIPAA laws okay. who I actually worked on. Okay. I can tell you some people I've met okay. sure. and, and so with that, so I can't say of anyone that I've worked on. Okay. But I can remember the first, um, it's, it's interesting, the first celebrity that I ever met was Dolly Parton. Okay. And at the time, she, I think, and Muhammad Ali were the two most well-known celebrities in the world. So I had the opportunity to do stuff with Muhammad as well as Dolly. Wow. Uh, and what you want to meet the kindest, nicest person, that was Dolly Parton. And so was Ali, but Dolly, remember her telling me, she said, I'm living in a fantasy land. If I don't take great care of my fans, mm -hmm. I've got nothing. So each fan for me is special. And she was the kindest, sweetest, nicest person. That was in 1987. And then from there, I was blessed, was able to pretty much go and treat a lot of other people. And with all the different people that you've met, and this job takes so many hours. What do you like to do for fun on your downtime? So for my life, my number one goal is to serve God. Mm -hmm. Two, I want to be the best husband, mm -hmm. son, mm -hmm. brother, friend, mm -hmm. chiropractor that I can possibly be. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. So my life's simple. If I just serve God mm -hmm. and I love everybody always, that's it. And then you do, and you do the right thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you've got a great life. Now, you had talked earlier about uh, some adv uh, advancements from when you started to now, like MRIs and stuff. What do, what do you see coming, or what do you know that's coming um, for future advancement? So when I started as a chiropractor in this town 35 years ago, chiropractors were kind of looked down on. Now a lot of chiropractors have almost become celebrities because all athletes use them. 
Uh, if you use it before an athletic performance and you can increase range of motion, if I'm a pitcher, that could give me an extra two to three miles an hour on a fastball. A golfer, it's going to give them maybe 10 to 15 yards on a drive. Everybody wants to use chiropractors now, where in the past it was actually a little bit more, it wasn't as open as it was today. The cool thing is I think our country is completely changing. We're getting away from the let me take a drug versus what's really the cause and how can I fix it versus let me take a drug to just take this and get rid of the symptom. Now, when you, when, some of your stuff does involve sports, obviously. So when you're watching the athletes on TV, do you ever look at them and go like, oh, that motion is just not going to be good? Correct, for sure. Pitching, the motion of pitching is brutal. But, you know, that's what they do for a living, and they do a great job. But that's, it's terrible for your shoulder. You're basically asking to have a shoulder problem if you're a pitcher. And that's with golf. Uh, I can remember the first time I saw a Tiger uh, at the Western Open. He's in the locker room. He jumps over a chair. I'm like, holy cow, this guy's jacked. He's never going to get hurt because, you know, I didn't think most golfers trained, but Tiger obviously trained and stretched and did everything mm -hmm. else. I'm like, I don't think Tiger will ever get hurt. Was I wrong on that? Because that motion with torquing and golf just tears your knee, your back, and everything apart. So even if you hit the ball perfect, you're probably going to have problems from that wear and tear. With all the different people that you uh, come through with the athletes and stuff, what sport have you seen maybe a rise of injuries? Because, you know, we've heard about with concussions with football and stuff. But besides football, is there another sport or activity that you see that has increased your business? So football's obviously all been one, but now I have to say the tackling techniques have completely changed. Mm -hmm. I can remember the old posters at York, you know, for the proper way to tackle, yeah. that's completely changed. So now the tackling techniques, everyone's trying to be so safe with the helmets, everything else, but now the new sports, lacrosse, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, is that physical? Soccer now yeah. is so physical, you know, with the slide tackling. Basketball, playing a game, it's almost like a, a football game out there because everybody's so physical now. So the rise, but I think safety has gone up with much better coaching, uh, much better gear. Um, so I think sports have become safer. Now, because you're also working with athletes and, you know, getting them back on the field instead of medicine, you know, stretching them out and stuff, you know, we've seen through uh, different celebrities that we've known, uh, Diamond Dallas Page, who's now into, he's been doing yoga. Do you see more athletes going into that, more stretching to work on their core than actually weights? That's a great tip. I think the big key is combination. Mm -hmm. So if you incorporate a spine in great alignment mm -hmm. so you stay healthy and you can move well and function well, then you have strong tendons and ligaments with stretching and strengthening specific physical therapy exercises. You can prevent the majority of injuries and keep someone much healthier than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to just the average person to, to improve or to keep up their, their body and, and to, no offense, to avoid coming to doctors? That's a great question. First, I'd say the best exercise in the world, I feel, is walking. And then if you find the exercise you love, find something you love and then do it consistency, consistently. So consistency over time is success. So if you say, John, I like to walk and I also like to bike. If you did that three times a week for the next 90 days, never do anything unless you decide to stay with it for 90 days. Because in six weeks, mm -hmm. we know the majority of people are going to quit a health club within the first six weeks. They'll never return. If they do it for 90 days, mm -hmm. we know that 8 out of 10 will keep doing it possibly the rest of their life. So if you commit to a specific time, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you like, doing the activity that you love mm -hmm. for 90 days, not only will you start to feel better, you'll start to look better, and it will change your life. I have to ask you, I run marathons. I've been running for 20 years. Um, I'm in my early 50s. Do I have problems <laughs> coming up with the future be from all the running, do you think? Everyone's a little unique with our genetics, but depending on how wise you train, you can save your joints. So if you go out and run on that uneven asphalt, which is not level, slope one to two feet, or the sidewalks, which are sloped three to six inches. You're never running on a level surface, plus it's pounding with the cement and asphalt. Now, if you can save your joint and run on a prairie path, run in the pool, save those joints uh, where it's level and you're saving the pounding, and also be preventative uh, afterwards doing positive things, getting adjusted, using ice, things like that, and stretching, then you can save your joints and possibly get an extra 10, 15, 20 years and running marathons versus the guy that runs every day on the asphalt or the cement, his joints are going to wear out no matter what. Well, with all that great information, 
We'll be right back with more of Hero Television. We're spending the half hour with Dr. John Jevitz of Elmhurst. This is Pastor Freddie, and you're watching Hero TV. Welcome back to Hero Television. We're spending the time with Dr. John Jevitz of Elmhurst and John G., who is my co-host, to uh, find out the world of what you do and find out ways of getting people to feel better. And we were talking about just different uh, ways of, uh, you know, with yoga and you know, looking at people's back. What do you think the biggest uh, part of the person's body that they're looking at when they come in for pain? Is it their back? Is it their legs? Because if we get all get older, your body starts to degenerate. But you, what part of the body do you see that people focus on the most? So we'll, we'll see rehab for knees, uh -huh. backs, shoulder surgeries, hip replacements. We'll see the big gamut of everything. But we know that 9 out of 10 people are going to have a back problem. The tough part is they wait for it to be a big problem and then they do something about it. If they're proactive and said, I want to prevent this from being a problem, but as a suggestion, I would tell everybody, look for a doctor that's willing to give you a 10 out of 10. If he's going to give you a 10 out of 10, and then make a decision. Because if your back hurts, Paul, and you come in and the doctor says, how committed are you to getting better? And you say, about an eight. I know you're not ready to get better yet. But when you're serious about getting better, then when you're ready to give a 10 out of 10 and he gives you a 10 out of 10, you're going to have great results with chiropractic and physical therapy combined. Because I don't think there's a better treatment that's non-surgical, non-drug. Because if you can get your spine in good alignment and everything moving the way it's supposed to, your body can heal itself. And then if you strengthen the tendons and ligaments, your body will stay in good alignment. And you'll feel, many people will say after six, eight weeks, this is the best I felt in years. Why didn't I do this sooner? It's about making a choice. Tomorrow morning when you get up, how are you going to feel? Are you going to feel great tomorrow? Or are you going to keep going through the same thing? And you see, because you deal with so many different clients and, and, and they come through the door, um, because you're from the business side of it, how, how receptive are the health care, you know, the, the United Healthcare, the different plans, how willing to go that route because they, they want to just kind of give you your doctor, here's your medicine, but not the therapy side of it. Are they willing to work with you guys on this? Yes, we accept thousands of insurance plans, mm -hmm. but it, it's been very difficult. Uh, a lot of my buddies that are surgeons, mm -hmm. It's difficult because they have to see more patients, mm -hmm. they get uh, reimbursed less, mm -hmm. um, and that's the insurance companies, which make it very, very difficult. So you have to see higher volume just to break even because wow. insurance cuts basically for income in the last five years, the insurance has been cut about 30 to 35 percent. So the physicians you say used to be saying, wow, they're really killing it, right. they're not because they're getting cut by insurances. They're making it much more difficult for everybody, which is tough on the patient too. You have one goal. Help that patient change the life. Hmm. You know, workouts have changed a lot over the years. There's a, now there's, especially the last 10, 15 years, with real emphasis on bulking and muscle build. Do you think that hurts the overall body? I, I know you said earlier about balance, but the athletes are huge now. Is that a bad thing overall? You, you're right, I think, about the balance because you don't want to be overdeveloped in one area. So if you can be strong and flexible, and good alignment and keep that, you're not going to get hurt. So a great analogy was why wouldn't a Walter Payton get hurt years ago because nobody was more flexible than Walter. Nobody was stronger than Walter. He also kept everything in good alignment. So what happens is how do you hurt a guy like that and he's going to stay healthy. He wasn't overdeveloped but he wasn't underdeveloped. He had no weaknesses and now I think athletes are focusing on the big picture versus let me just get big which I think football was for a while. Now it's, I want to be, yes, I want to be big, but I want to be flexible, I want to be quick, I want to be fast. We're hitting every aspect, and that's why the athletes are so amazing today. And I'm sure you, uh, you get this question a lot, so um, how, many, how often do people come up to you and how do you handle it when they say, yeah, uh, just friends, you know, you know, my back is bugging me, could you check it out? You'd hear that all the time, and it's a great question, because the first thing you'd say, tell me about it. And then after that, if you listen and see what's going on, you'd say, is this something that you're, if you could get rid of it, would you want to? Because a lot of people are like, ah, I don't know, it's not that bad. They're just not ready to make the choice to get better yet. Now if they say, yes, I want to get rid of it, you'd say, how committed are you to getting rid of your problem? If they say a seven or eight, you know, they're just not ready yet. And you say, hey, let me know when you're serious about getting better, give me a call. Now if they say, I'm 10 out of 10, I want to get better, I want to run marathons for the next 30 years, that's somebody that you can help. 
and you can work together. And you don't know that you can help everybody, but it's sure worth giving it a shot. And you're talking about commitment because those people are sitting at home going, oh, I got this, bat, my back's bad or this. Uh, is the first step, do they go to their doctor first or do they come talk to you and get a, uh, see where they're at physically before they go to the doctor? What is the pro process? Because some people, they don't know what the first step is. That's a great question. So if you have a neuro, neuromusculoskeletal, so something with nerves, muscles, skeleton, mm -hmm. we're the great person to call. Okay. Now, if you have a sinus infection, which okay. actually we can sometimes help with that as well, but if you have an infection, you have something else going on, then you want to call your primary care doctor and get it taken care of. Because the primary cares do a great job. Mm -hmm. The surgeons do a great job. Our goal is to prevent the surgery and prevent the medicines, but you can't do that with everybody. So if you didn't get better, yeah. we're treating it at a reasonable amount of time, I'm going to send you that surgeon yeah. and make sure you get the best care possible. And besides all the the clients that you deal with and work with. I, I see you do a lot of activities in the community. You need to work donations. I think we were driving down 83 and we saw this is keep the highway clean. It's Dr. Javits sign there right on the corner of, I think, St. Charles and 83. Can you tell us some of the charities that you've been working with? So uh, we we're very blessed. Hops Humanity has a fundraiser and very blessed recently to get $10,000 for Ray Graham. Mm -hmm. And they had another fundraiser and we were very blessed to get $10,000 for Little City. But I have to say that I think we're in the most generous country in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think, as I said, if 5 million people decide tomorrow to do one act of kindness without asking for anything in return, could you see if that happened daily for a month? Mm -hmm. We'd change the world. So everybody has the opportunity just, you know, just taking the time to yeah. do it. And there's charities everywhere. So Elmhurst, I believe, is a phenomenal community, but I believe all communities have the potential to be phenomenal. If guys like you, mm -hmm. because I know you give a scholarship at York High School, mm -hmm. uh, which is phenomenal, and it, you know that's given back right there. This TV show, mm -hmm. if it changes one person's life, what's that worth? A lot. Yes, and that's what you guys do by doing spots like this. Now you've been doing this for a long time. You've been in chiropractic for a long time. Um, without naming any specific name, is there any one case, one um, individual that has come to you that you really remember, like you worked, I don't want to say a miracle, but you really did something, you know, tremendous? Uh, here's an example, a lady that hasn't been able to get out of bed for a few years. So what happened is she made a commitment. I said, how serious are you about getting better? She goes, all I do is get out of bed to make breakfast for my family and then go back to bed and then make dinner and that's it. Can't work, can't do anything. Knee replacement, everything else. I said, how committed? She goes, I'll give you a 10 out of 10. Her goal in the first 90 days was to be able to stationary bike for three minutes. Now it's been a year and a half. She's 165 pounds lighter. She works full time at Jewel mm. and she loves it. Now, by doing specific chiropractic adjustments combined with specific physical therapy, we got her feeling better but she did it for 90 days and didn't give up. She learned a habit. Now she's continued to do it. And today I spoke with her and she already swam for two hours. And it's that, how cool is it to see people's yeah. life change? But you have to surround yourself with physicians, family, friends that believe in you. And never, I remember her writing her goal, never give up on a specific mm -hmm. goal, a specific goal, um, even if you can't see it. That's why you want specific written goals with a timeline. And other than giving 10, per, or giving 10 out of 10, do you have any advice for, people are living older, to older ages now, do you have just general advice for, for you know, a person, maybe a senior citizen, to help their life? Great question. So, so many people out there have so much wisdom, and it kills me when I hear they're not still giving back. So, why not, I, I was, I'm going to quote Lou Holtz a little bit, he said, uh, I went to a retirement center where the average age was deceased, and he said, so. He says, I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah. He says, I still got to give back. So he's still changing lives. So I would challenge everybody out there, yeah, keep playing golf. But maybe instead of golf five or six days a week, say, who am I going to tutor, yeah. mentor? Uh, what charity can I help out with? Where can I make some changes? Because I learned so much from these people that have more wisdom than us. Yeah. What should we be doing? Let's learn from them because our young kids are going to change the world. Yeah. And how are we going to help change them so they can do that adequately? And when you're speaking about changing the world and giving back to the young, a lot of people that we hear going to uh, going through college 
are going into your field, what advice do you have for them? Because sometimes they think, hey, I want to get into sports medicine, I want to get into this, but they don't know how to get from point A to point B. What advice, since you are successful at what you're doing, what advice do you have for them that want to get into this field? Great question. So my buddy went into chemical engineering, never did a day of it in his life, and he's brilliant. In the first six months, he found out he hated the profession. If you want to be a chiropractor, go and work with a chiropractor before you start school to see what it's like. If you want to be an announcer, yeah. go and follow you guys and see what is it like. And now if you love it, yeah. and that's your passion, because as your quote that you have in your book, mm -hmm. do what you love, love what you do, and the world will come to you. You love what you do. You guys love what you do. With that passion, you can change the world. And with that passion, what is your goals in the next few years? So. My goal, number one, as I said, serve God, mm -hmm. love everyone, hus best husband, you know, father, son. But goal would be change as many lives as I can with chiropractic and physical therapy. But it's nothing cooler than seeing like that lady I told you about that changed her life. Uh, and then give back as much as possible. Uh, I, when, when the end comes and I'm running around third base, I'm on going head first, diving in head first, sliding, not sitting on the couch, watching TV, doing nothing at home. So if you can change, I, I said, I don't think there's anything better than giving back. Um, like I said, do something nice for someone without asking for anything in return. And I think the give back's 100 times that. Where do you think your positivity comes from? You're a real positive guy, obviously. Um, you have a deep faith. You have a deep love for your family. Where is that positivity? How, does it, how, did, it was, how did it come about? As I said, Jesus, God, great faith. Because with that, you can do anything. And it's all about a choice. Great parents, great wife, mm -hmm. great life, great kids. It's a choice. So when you get up tomorrow morning, you got to make a choice. Oh, I'm exhausted. I go to work. I hate my job. Or I love my job. I'm going to make the best of it. I don't care. I'm going to be the best janitor I can be. I'm going to do the best job possible, you know, sweeping the streets or cleaning the toilets or whatever. I'm going to do the best I can be. And if you're the best you can be, you got some pride. So tomorrow when you wake up, I will be great today. I'll do the right thing. I'll give 100%. I will be a leader. I feel great. I'm strong. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm blessed. If you start every day with that, those positive affirmations, and give 100%, you'll change your life, and you'll change the people around you. I'm going to change it up just a little bit for a quick second here. You've known Paul for a long time. <laughs> you got to share with us some story on Paul. All right, so Paul, my, my, yeah. Coach Newton has, so Coach Newton was great because he made everybody feel special. And I asked him, Coach, what's the deal with you coaching? He goes, John, you need to make everybody feel special and loved. And he would tell reasons. I go, what about my, my, what about that? Well, loyalty, which is, comes from his parents, generosity, kindness. But this is the type of guy Paul is. So I get this great note, and inside this note, a long letter, inside this note, this is from Paul. Paul wins a state championship in cross country. Mm -hmm. And what does he do? And this is, this is what everybody out there, if you do this, your return will be amazing. So I get a, a note, and I get a, a gold a, a state championship medal. It's Paul's state championship medal that he sent to me with a letter saying, thank you for changing my life. Do you know what that means to me? It's priceless because of a guy like you. So not only did you affect me, you make the way I look at everybody else and say, why aren't I doing stuff like this? Because you're such a great role model. So I have that medal, plus his book, <laughs> uh, <laughs> else. but what does that mean to me? His state championship medal, he gave to someone else saying, thank you for helping me. And people that want to get information on you, where can they go? So we're in Elmhurst on York Road. You look up Jevitt's Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, and I've merged, and I'm blessed to be with Dr. Michael Cagdo and Olympia Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, and we're confident we do a great job helping people because he's just as motivated as I am to help as many people as possible. But I'm going to challenge all five million of viewers and say, whose life are you going to change tomorrow like you guys are doing? Spread the word, watch Hero TV, and God bless everybody. Thank you for watching Hero Television. We'll see you next time on Hero TV.